Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your indescribable love for us. We praise and thank you for your loving kindness and great mercy, which is new every morning and remains steadfast throughout the day. Open our minds to what you have to teach us. Open our hearts to your love. Open our souls to the joy that can only be found in you. Amen. You may be seated. As we prepare for the offering, let us do so with gratitude for our blessings and the knowledge that all we have belongs to you. Generous God, you have blessed us beyond measure. We pray that you pour out your favor, not only on the monetary gifts we've given, but upon our very lives offered to you in a spirit of gratitude. The special offering for the month of November will be for the Global Missions. Global Missions exists to take the whole gospel to the whole world using the whole church. The mission is that every tribe and nation will know the name of Jesus. If you feel called to give, contributions can be placed in the back of the sanctuary in the service cup, and that is also where traditional ties will be placed in the um, sanctuary at the plate. And today, we're very excited and thankful to have Buchanan Unity join us. So I will be handing this over to them. They have songs for us and a special message. So I hope everyone enjoys that. Discombobulated at the time. <laughs> <laughs> just the moment that you thought you had just a little extra time. It's like, wow, what happened? You know, usually before we start to worship, we do that very song. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We come into his courts with praise. And we're just so thankful and we just bless his holy name today. You know, even though the message that I have today has to do with the kingdom. And it's, it, it really goes along with that new mercies every day. When we realize what the kingdom really is, we know that love, kindness, and compassion is so important. So we're going to start out with a, a little fast worship this morning. Are you able to stand? If you're able to stand, we'd like you to stand with us, please. Amen. Amen. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. It's a, it's a little easy. It's easy. You're going to get it around the second time around, okay? <laughs> Clapping. Amen. 
We're going to do one more after I finish, and it's called Nobody's Greater. So I'm, I have a short testimony that I'd like to share. I don't want to hold you too long today. Um, for this, I must put my glasses on. As I as I got older, um, I I realized that God had given me a testimony from my childhood. Early. 
early childhood from the age of about 11 or 12. And I, a lot of you don't know this about, we, we shared a little bit last time we were here about our family and, and where we came from. We came from the deep south. We, um, we've always sang, we've always been a singing family. We have parents that knew the Lord and passed that on to us. And one of the ministries that God began to speak to me about was choosing to love. And I had some cards made up and I thought, okay, this is gonna be easy. You know, go out and, and choose to love and go out and tell people we gotta choose to love no matter what we go through. That's but you right. know what? It ain't always easy. Because a lot of times we don't choose to love. We choose to have grudges. We choose to get tied up in our emotionalism. We choose to attend more to the body and the soul opposed to being God conscious. We're body conscious because we know that gets us around in the world. We can see what's happening. And in our soul, we have emotions. And in our emotions, we realize that so much is going on around us and we're sometimes we're we, we're complex in our minds you know like how do i feel about this how do i feel about the war how do i feel about what's going on every day our emotions are changing from one thing to another until we decide to get god conscious and that's what god has been dealing with me about true worship the only way we can get into true worship is to be God conscious. Mm -hmm. And to honestly realize that that is part of the kingdom. The kingdom, you know, it's in our hearts. We, we have our bodies and our hands and our feet and our mouth and our, our movement. We can move around in the world and we can expand the kingdom. But it comes from within. And I learned that. And as I even as I get older, and every time I tell this story, I realize that God is expanding the kingdom, you know, with each of our stories, each of our testimonies, each of the things that we do in our community, the hellos that we say every day, the smiles that we give. That's an expansion of the kingdom because we realize that the kingdom is not a religion. The kingdom is God's throne, is, is where he sits, and it's where he pours his love into us that we pour it out to one another, where he pours his kindness into us, and we're able to pour that out to one another. Um, if you can, I'd like for you, if you have a Bible, to turn to Psalms 145. This is so powerful. It is so powerful. And if you're there, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna read it. I, I took the time to write it out because a lot of times when I write things out, I, I can see it a lot clearer for some reason. I'm just old school, okay? <laughs> okay, starting at verse eight. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to get angry, full of unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. All of your works will thank the Lord, and your faithful followers will bless you. They will talk together about the glory of your, what? Kingdom. They will celebrate examples of your power. So I, I love that. It said they will tell about the mighty deeds and about the majesty of your reign. From your kingdom, 
is an everlasting kingdom. You rule generation to generation. And when I, you know, as I was reading that, I was like, Lord, what, what do you want me to, what do you want me to say? He said, you know, in this Holy Spirit, was like, I, I need you to take everyone there first to understand what my kingdom is. It's like a, when you think about the kingdom, I think like a stream. And it's a small stream. And everyone began to drink from that stream. And that, that stream is merciful, slow to get angry, it's unfailing love, knowing that God is good, knowing that he's compassionate, knowing that he is faithful. And as we drink from, all of us begin to drink from that stream, guess what happens? That stream doesn't dry up. It expands. Because God has more than enough for all of us. He has more than enough kindness, more than enough love, more than enough faithfulness for all of us. So when the kingdom impacts a community, it brings a lot of joy. A lot of joy. Because when we think about our church, and as he began to show me this, our church is like the educational place so that we can go out and do the kingdom work. You know what I mean? It's like the institution that we come into and we learn about God. We learn about his forgiveness. We learn about his love and his compassion. And we get equipped to go out and do the kingdom work. And some of us may say, well, I don't know. I don't have a work to do. Your work today just might be smiling, babe. Sophie, giving me some encouragement. That's a work of the kingdom. Your work today may be letting someone take a parking space that you just thought you had. That's the work of the kingdom. Your work today may be escaping an accident that could have happened. That's the work of the kingdom. The things that the kingdom brings to us are things that we sometimes think, oh, wow, look what happened. But when you live the kingdom life, those are the things you are expecting God to do. Amen? Those are the, you know, the miracles. Um, people being, giving their life to God a lot of times, and we do celebrate, but isn't that part of the kingdom? Isn't that kingdom work? I love it. So I'm going to share a little story um, with you. And I started out sharing this um, every year with the schools and I did it during um, Black History Month. And I would share this with the school and I started about maybe 12 years ago, I, and then I began to get called to different elementary schools, and then there was the high school, and even last year, we began to, to take music to the high school. My brother went with me, and we began to take music to the high school, because a lot of the teachers say, you know, we can't really say Jesus, you know what I mean? We don't get to, to talk about Jesus in school, but when you sing a song, and you, you, you sing something like, God knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees, he sees each tear that falls. Something happens inside that child. Because each one needs to reach one. So I'm going to share this story. And you're going to see where I'm coming from. Have you ever been taken out of your comfort zone? It can be a little scary and uncomfortable. As a young black girl growing up, life really seemed okay. But there were things happening in America that was about to change my world as I knew it. We all, all of us, we lived in a little town um, called Lake Placid, Florida. And it was in an area, at that time, it was just called, it was called the colored quarters. Have any of you even experienced that name? Well, we noticed when we moved here, a lot of people hadn't even experienced that. 
and I'm so glad our dad lives here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue. That meant that every family that lived there, that every family that lived there was black. Our schools, our stores, our churches, our neighborhoods. Um, we, it was all black. And this was in 1965. Then one day during that year, our parents received a certified letter from the federal government informing them that all students that were entering junior high school would be attending school downtown. Now, there's a little story behind that. The school downtown was an area where at one time um, we weren't allowed to be in that area. But because the federal government had passed this law, it was like we were going to get to, to go to school downtown. And I got super excited because the school downtown looked totally different than the school in my own neighborhood. It was, it was called uh, Lake Placid High School. I had been attending Copper Elementary School since first grade. It was the only school in my community. It was 1 through 12. This was big news. Segregation was ending and integration was the new law. We would be attending the white school, quote unquote. It was very exciting news. My dad, who you're gonna learn a little bit about, thought it was wonderful because this was an opportunity to get a better education, not to mention black and white children would get equal treatment. The first exciting event was getting to ride a school bus. A school bus. Well, we had charted out little pathways to school from where I lived, and we loved it. I mean, you know, you go through, you can sometimes run through a path, and it might be like a little woody area, and it'd be like, there's a monster in there, and we'd shoot through there real fast, you know? Like, okay, um, you go first, then you go next, you know? And so, like I said, when you're a child, you're not thinking, you know, it's like everything seems, it seems normal, you know what I mean? So, that, it was really exciting that day to know that we had a school bus that was going to transport us downtown Lake Placid so that I had never been on one. The big day came, a day of freedom. During this time, civil rights was a movement and many people were peaceably protesting to secure the rights for us. They were black people and white people standing for justice for all. The ride downtown was so exciting. And on the bus, we were all talking about how wonderful this was. And we were like, we don't have to walk in the hot sun, you know. And just, because, you know, in Florida, it's, it's pretty hot. It's hot. You know, and, and your parents were like, get out of here, it's time to go to school. You know, <laughs> you got to walk to school. The ride seemed to take forever. Then we were finally there. To my amazement, the school was beautiful. There were sidewalks and manicured lawns, and the playground looked amazing. The driver parked in front of the school, and with instructions from our teachers, we all got off quietly and lined up. As we started to walk towards the school, the principal pushed through the door as if he was very upset to see us. He immediately threw up his arms, pointing at us and screaming at our teacher, saying, get them back on the bus. They are not allowed to enter here. The teachers tried to reason with him to no avail, even telling him, but it's the law. So one of our teachers asked him, if they can't come inside, how will they know where to go when school starts next year? How will, how will we find our classes? Because that school was big, okay? It was, it was huge. That's when he boldly just said, let them look through the windows. And you know what? We were allowed to peek through the windows. It was disappointing 
when the kids started kind of calling us everything but who we really were, who we really were. And it was very disappointing and hurting. And at that time, I was totally out of my comfort zone. I didn't feel very welcome. You know, I was um, 12 years old and, you know, things had turned around and I was very excited. And one of the reasons why I was really excited, I'll tell you why, because my dad was a preacher and not one day during that time or during the events of civil rights did we ever hear a cruel word about anyone that didn't look like us. Because you know what he told us? He told us that we had to choose to love. He said it's a choice. And he said, I want to teach that to all of my children. And he did. He literally did. If you um, go back into the uh, Newcastle papers at the library, you will see many articles on him after we moved here. I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. So as we were looking through the windows and all this stuff was happening, we finished our outside tour and we returned to the bus. Now, on the way home, you hear how quiet it is here. Imagine a lot of children on a bus and it's just quiet. It was very, very quiet because we were kind of wondering what happened. You know, like, like what happened? So when I got um, home, I told my dad, I said, Daddy, I said, I know you were, you know, he was really excited because he would always sit on the steps with me when he would come home and we would talk. And, he, and I said, like I, when the kids were here, I, we sat on the back porch. And, and I said, Daddy, I said, we win. I said, but we couldn't get in. And you know what my dad said to me? He said, it's okay. He said, there will come a time that it will happen. He said, right now, people are just not ready for it. He said, but you got to love people anyway. You have to love them anyway. And that began, that sparked something inside of me. It taught me the value of love. It taught me the value of being kind. It taught me the value of compassion. It taught me the value of patience. It taught me the value of respecting someone else's opinion, no matter what it is. We have, sometimes we have problems with that as we, as we get older. Because sometimes, I think, even with my children, we go another level and we don't stop to tell them that everyone is entitled to their opinion. And then I learned later that 90% of it is your attitude, how you take it. The 10% is the problem. And he would say, don't ever be part of the trouble, but be part of the solution. Choose to love. So, one thing I learned about um, life is that we must not abandon solutions that were deep in our unity and our love. And one of the places that we can find unity and love is in our churches. Our church is the institution, remember, that teaches us about the kingdom. The kingdom is not about culture. It's not about race. We saw that in Samaria in the Bible, right? Remember Jesus? Remember the woman at the well? She didn't go because she was, she was different. And the women were talking about it. You know how we women can be, you know? <laughs> they were talking about her. They were downing her. She was a different culture. She was a different race. And what did Jesus do? You know what he did? He sat down there with her. And he began to, to tell her about the kingdom because Jesus always taught the kingdom. 
didn't teach denomination. He taught about the kingdom of God is at hand. Always, you can get, you can, you can just go through the Bible. You hear so many things about the kingdom, and so it made me curious. What is this kingdom? And who are we that he would crown us? And he made us a little lower than the angels. But look how he feels about us. We can, we sin every day. All of us do. But he is so faithful and he's so compassionate. And he is so generous with his love and with his kindness. What does he do? He forgives us. He forgives us. So we can't abandon unity of the spirit. That's what, when we, when we began to praise together today, and you stood up and you were clapping hands, did you see a kingdom act? That's why in the book of Acts, it talks a lot about the kingdom. It talks a lot about the acts. What was Jesus, what did Jesus do? He went around telling people about the love of his father, teaching us how to be examples to our children and to our neighbors and to each other, teaching us that love is important, teaching us that respect is important. And I love that I was able to receive that from my, my parents. You know why? Because God made a way for this family, this black family came all the way from the South, and God made a way that we can walk into churches where there may not even be any black people. What do we do? We come in and we have a great time. God did that. That is kingdom work. That's the kingdom. That's how it works. It's not about the means. The means is how we get here. The means is like, what was I going to wear today? Wear something about Savior Jesus. You know, that's the means. But that's the end of it. When I take this outfit off, oh, oh, I have that outfit on. I'll look for another one. But when I take in what God has given us through the kingdom is for purpose. It's the whole purpose and it's forever. And it's from generation to generation. Just like my dad taught this generation, I'm teaching, I taught my kids that same thing, that same kind of love, the same kind of compassion. They're teaching their children the same thing. So when they go out into the world, they feel, you know what, we're kingdom minded. I'm supposed to do this. I don't have to feel like this. I'm, I'm, you know, we're not down. I'm not down on anybody because of the way they feel or because of the way they think. I'm willing to sit down and I'm willing to talk and I'm willing to listen. And I'm willing more than anything to share. And I think that's one of the big things that we need in our world today is understanding one another and sharing with one another. Because I, I was, as I was studying this, I, the Lord gave me a scenario. He said, if you were sick and you needed some blood and you couldn't get that blood, you may have to send, maybe you gotta get that blood from somebody in, in, in Spain. And he said, if that blood is the right match, it's going to keep you alive. Isn't that amazing? And then it took me back to about the blood of Jesus, how it's the right match for all of us. It's the right match. Because he died for all of us. He called us his very own. He took my sins and it was nailed to the cross. So whatever I've done, it's a finished work. You know, he, he, he took care of it. So why can't we begin to take care of some things in the church, 
outside of the church, wherever we are, that God wants us to expand, and that is the kingdom. Our kingdom in the earth realm right now, it, it's, it suffers a lot because we don't take the time to do this. Sometimes we just need that little time out to do this. I don't know about you guys, but every time I come here, I learn something new about you guys. I learn how kind you are, how open you are, how you don't, you know what, when I come in, I don't feel like you're looking at me and say, oh, there, there's a black family. You know what you say? They're the Buchanans. We're so glad to have the Buchanans here. You know, and as we continue this movement in this life, because I know there's going to be another life where it's going to be nothing but glory, glory, glory. Because we're going to be way, how they say it, way in the blue. We're going to be, in, we're going to be up there with Jesus. And there, we're going to be around his throne. And we're going to be howdy, howdy, howdy to everybody. You know? But let's try to get it right. Right here while we have the time. While I can see you, I can smile at you. I can see you out somewhere, this young lady that does worship. You know, it's gonna, it's, isn't it going to be nice when I see you somewhere? Hi, how are you? Yes, you know, we need more and more of that. When I see Peter, you know what, Karen and Brian, they are an amazing couple. And I say this, with, with all respect, they have never, from the first day I met this young lady, I was working at the library and I was working with children. And it was a lot because the children weren't used to having an African American librarian, you know what I mean? And it, sometimes it can be really heavy. But when Karen came in, she never, she was just beautiful as she is today. That same smile, that same personality. It's like she had known me forever. She treated me like a kingdom sister. <laughs> and as her children grew up, guess what? Always so respectful. Just, you know, just made you feel like you were just at home. Like when I heard someone today say, you just, just feel like you're at home. Just go ahead and do what you need to do. And we love that. We, we love that. And we all need that. So I'm very grateful to know Saida, Liam, and Peter because they have been a great part of my life. I have learned so much from them. I have learned from you guys. So don't think just because we're 69, we can't learn something from someone. We can. We just have to be willing. And we have to be honest. Because we don't always get it right. But if you're willing, I'll tell you something. The Lord will help you. And just like he helped me not to have hate in my heart. It's like he expanded it. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I, I, I want to love. I want to I wanna worship the Lord. Because that's the whole purpose is worshiping God. Once, we, once you take all the means out, all the other stuff is out, it's about worshiping God. Worshiping God is not just singing. Worshiping God is not just praying. Worshiping God is fulfilling the purpose that he has called you to do in the earth realm. So I would like to thank all of you all for taking the time out and letting me share this story with you. And I ask that you would pray for me as I share it more and more in the body of Christ, that we can come more and more into the understanding of what real worship looks like and what real kingdom living looks like. So I would like to just end this with a prayer. And um, we'll sing another song. Well, Father God, Lord, we just give you so much thanks right now. We give you so much praise 
for who you are, God. We thank you, God, that you are awesome in all your ways. We thank you, God, that you are so forgiving. You are so full of compassion, and you're so full of love. And God, you see us through the blood of Jesus. And I'm so thankful, God, that you even gave, that you gave your son so that when you look at us, you'd be able to look at us and you could see the righteousness of yourself. And so, God, we just thank you, thank you, thank you. We worship you. We honor you as we honor one another. We serve you as we serve one another. And God, I thank you right now for your forgiveness. And God, forgive us when we trespass against someone, Lord. Forgive us when we just take someone for granted. Forgive us when we make assumptions. Help us to go back to worship. Help us to be God conscious. So that we do what is right for you. Because in the end, God, it's all about you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm living this moment with you because of you. Don't 
criticize don't down them don't push them away and I dare you to love them back that needs to have prayer for a family member that's going through something right now. 
somebody that can come and just stand in their place for a second can make a difference. We do that. And you can just stand right here. If there's anyone. In closing, I'd like to give a round of applause to the Buchanans and thank them for coming today and worshiping with us. Um, that was a very heartfelt testimony that we had. Um, so thank you for that. I think it's, it's also a good reminder for us to always be the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, this month is a month of Thanksgiving. Um, we're a culture who likes to email and text, but maybe use that to call someone to send a handwritten letter and just um, be grateful for all that God has given us. Um, so I'll close with 1 Thessalonians verse 518. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God and Jesus Christ for you. So thank you again. Thank you.